Hi, my name's Daniel Hemis. I'm a kingdom-minded entrepreneur and businessman. And I'm just going to go into a little bit of my testimony or story. Um, I am a father and husband, have three boys. Uh, currently, at the time of this recording, it is October 2023. And uh, my oldest son is 19, almost 20. My second son is 17 and my youngest son, the youngster, is four years old. And uh, so just a little bit of a background about me. I started off my career working for building supply companies in, New in Auckland, New Zealand. Worked for Carters, um, worked for a company called Timberworld which is now uh, one of the ITM branches. And then a, for a while, I also worked for another ITM branch. So I did 10 years in building supplies, working right up from a yardman in a timber yard through to uh, sales on the counter and then to a rep role as a company representative selling building materials, including pre frames and trusses uh, to builders as my core clients. Then not long after that, I was approached by a construction company to come and work for them. They were one of my clients actually, and they were expanding and doing a lot of architectural new builds and they needed to expand their team. So I worked in a kind of a project coordinator, project management role for them for a couple of years. That uh, company kind of uh, got into a bit of trouble. They started up a concrete cutting business as well and also had a subcontractor that fell off a deck and broke his neck and ended up, they weren't insured and ended up having to go through a lengthy court case and uh, which ended up, they had to kind of sell their businesses and, and close them down actually, the construction business. So I, at that stage, the, another friend of theirs who had a development business bought bought uh, the concrete cutting business and I kind of stayed on in a part-time role. I actually worked as a pastor at a church or, or an assistant pastor at a church too in a, in a small town and uh, did a year at Bible college kind of at the same time as I was working uh, these different roles that I was in. Then after that, I worked for a, a concrete company um starting off in, in a commercial sales role and then moving to a depot manager role and that was uh kind of managing 23 drivers and yardmen for co concrete truck drivers and concrete batching staff and also uh, dry goods drivers then i moved from there to owning my first business which was like a franchise. It was a licensed business doing renovations and property maintenance. And I bought that at a good price. It was an existing business that was not long established, 18 months old. And I was able to take over the business and hit the ground running and really build the business up. And I had that for three and a half years and then sold it and bought a bigger construction company. Probably the main reason for selling was I, I did a business management course called business blueprint in australia and sydney and i learned a lot about uh, marketing systems systemizing your business um how to how to get leads into the into the business and convert them into clients and with a licensed or or franchise model business i wasn't really in charge of the marketing sort of thing so i couldn't implement a lot of what i was learning so i was approached I, I used to go to a BNI group, which is a business networking group, BNI Business Networking International, and there was another builder at that group who was interested in selling his business. So we both got along and I bought his business and realized fairly quickly it was it was a business called Goldline Construction and I bought that in 2019, January 2019. And in that very first year in business, we we started a really big job and we also quoted uh, eight other jobs that year and we missed out on all of them. 
Now, the model of that business was tendering to architects. And we realized, I realized fairly quickly that these architects were actually quite out of touch. And probably the reason that most of those jobs didn't go ahead was that they were significantly over the owner's budgets. And uh, not long before that, probably just before I sold my franchise business, I uh, got in touch with a group or came across a group called, at the time it was called Kingdom Investors. Uh, subsequently, they've changed their name to Kingdom Initiatives. And this group or movement was headed up by a guy called Dave Hodgson based in the Sunshine Coast in Australia, uh, who lectures right around the world in different places, universities and all sorts of places about implementing biblical principles into your business to see God's favor come upon your business. And it really, as I started watching the lectures online, it really resonated me, with me. It was stuff that I'd never heard before. I didn't, hadn't heard it in church circles, and it was really, it just hit me. I was like, wow, this is, this is actually bringing the kingdom of God into businesses. And it was amazing stuff. I just binged, watched all of these lectures and thought, wow, this is amazing. And subsequently, I contacted them and became the Auckland chapter leader to start the Auckland chapter in New Zealand. And uh, we, we kicked that off, I think it was 2021. So I ran it for about a year. But as part of the Kingdom Initiative's way of doing things, we focused a lot on having a personal relationship with the Lord. So one of our teachings, one of the core teachings was going to do what we call a pray day. And so once a week I would go and pray and seek the Lord about business and about different things and what to implement in the business. And those times were really amazing times where I felt the Lord would just impress upon my mind different things about putting into place in the business. And one of those things that was specific that I got was to focus on a specific niche in my construction business. So when I, when I bought this business, Goldline Construction, it was doing architectural new builds uh doing large renovations and alterations and extensions but it was kind of like it was almost like it was doing everything but it and it wasn't specifically focusing on one particular area and the model was tendering to architects like i said before and as i was doing these pray days i felt that we should be focusing on a niche and I realized a little while into owning this business that the, the type of builds we were doing were very large and complex. And we, where we had flat roofs and block walls and different uh, intersections with the buildings, and it was quite prone. It was, it, it, it were, there were complex types of builds. And it was a bit over my head, to be honest, and getting into doing minor dwellings we got into a niche doing minor dwellings where we were focusing on people that had their own land and we were able to add an additional dwelling onto their property. And it was such a significant move and change that we made in the business. And once we started doing that, our, our marketing started to get a lot of traction and we started to build up and, and become well known and, and, become experts basically in this field of building uh, design and build for doing minor dwellings. So that was a real turning point in the business. Um, I owned that business for three and a half years as well. But the very first job that we did, we got into a bit of trouble uh, by going significantly over budget on this one particular job and the owner started getting quite distressed. And it ended up also that our builder that we had employed on the job had done some faulty workmanship and it's, it's, it's a long story, but to cut the story short, the, we ended up having to go uh, into an arbitration and then having a lot of legal fees. And as we had transitioned the business from uh, tendering to architects through to doing design and build, we had a bit of a gap where we had a lean year 
and then also obviously we had uh, COVID hit in 2020 and we had lockdowns and a combination of those things and having a bit of a gap meant that we didn't have a large uh, excess of cash flow and because of that and the arbitration we ended up um, while I focusing on that particular niche was really good and I ended up signing up about eight jobs in the space of about three or four months and getting 12 months worth of work ahead because it was design and build the design phase was a lot uh, slower going through council and because of having to go into arbitration we ended up having to close the business down and put it into liquidation so that happened in July 2022 and then I had to go out and get a job basically so the good news was I got a job straight away unfortunately we had to sell our house our family home to pay all the bills and to settle everything and the good news is it's all settled now uh, a year later or a year a year and a bit later however obviously we had to sell our family home we had a little bit of money left over after selling the home and paying the bills and we were able to buy a caravan which is good so this uh where i'm recording this from or my studio or my workplace now for for doing my the stuff that i'm doing at the moment like uh, recording courses and that is is my caravan but the good news also is that um we were able to move in with my wife's parents so current currently at the time of this recording we are living with my wife's parents and um i know god doesn't waste experiences and uh, everything that I learned from the previous seven years of being in business and uh, going through challenging times, going through transitional periods, uh, learning all, all about the business and the business courses that I did, taking a business, the franchise business that we had and building it up and selling it for a, a decent profit. And then obviously buying the other business and transitioning that from one model, um, which was a kind of a model tendering to architects and transitioning it through to a design and build model working with owners directly and building up a pipeline of leads putting all the marketing things into place for my business and getting booked out with 12 months work in advance even though we couldn't carry on with all of those jobs um, I learned a lot in that process and now I am working uh, employed as a project manager for one of the largest uh, residential construction or housing company group housing companies in New Zealand in the longest standing franchise and over the last year and a bit I've learned a massive amount also having worked in that role and seeing how how a building company can work should work and seeing some of the issues obviously you know through the COVID and uh, subsequent shortage of material supplies and labor uh, through to the point now where it's swung right around the other way where we've got um, builders and bricklayers and subcontractors contacting us on a weekly basis looking for work um, I've learned a massive amount so all of that really to say that I have a wealth of knowledge in the construction area especially I'm not a qualified builder myself however having owned both the franchise for a property maintenance and renovation business and having owned a construction company and run those in conjunction with licensed builders and working with licensed builders i feel that i have a wealth of knowledge especially on the business side of things and what i'm wanting to do now i'm going i'm currently going through the process of recording a course because i believe god doesn't waste experiences and what i've learned uh, especially over the last three and a half, four years where I had my own business and transitioned it from a model of tendering to architects through to a design and build model doing minor dwellings, learning a lot about the Auckland Unitary Plan, council regulations, things like that. Uh, God doesn't waste that, that type of experience. And so also back in 2020, while we were going through lockdowns, I... Uh, I saw another little side business opportunity it was at the time doing a digital marketing product um, it was called the social media lead machine 
and I was able to put that into place in my own business, uh, which was a, another reason why I was getting a lot of leads through and was part of my strategy. Also, I learned a lot about uh, Google ads and social media and and building my own websites and getting a lot of leads through, seeing, seeing data come through um, Google Analytics, all of these different things that I put into place in my business uh, from specifically from going through the business programs that I went through and this little side business that I got into I've I've was a really amazing business and once I once I signed up uh, when I did have the construction business and went through with a building coach and put the right little tweaks and things into place in my business and was able to get my sales process nailed down I was able to then like I said uh, get 12 months of work booked up in advance and that same system that I had even though I've had to put the business into liquidation because of that one job that turned bad and and we were ended up trading insolvent and I couldn't afford to go through the arbitration process and spend thousands and thousands of dollars in lawyers fees to try and fight it um I've all, I've taken all of that knowledge and experience and been recording a course called the 14 day builders lead gen system online course and um, that's where I am today not far off launching that course because I have a heart and passion to help people and to implement biblical principles into my business and help other people to implement these same principles into their businesses as well I'm also very passionate about carrying on with the Kingdom Initiatives chapter, Auckland chapter. So whether that's uh, in person or online, probably mostly is going to be running it over Zoom meetings. Um, I'm excited to be able to help people and especially builders. And um, with this uh, Kingdom Initiatives Auckland chapter, I want to help kingdom-minded people to be able to implement biblical principles into their business, run them really well and see God's favor. And, um, you know, the, the good thing about kingdom initiatives is that the heart of it is to help people, is to do business God's way. Um, in the Bible, there's a guy called Boaz, and in the book of Ruth, he is is a, a model the way that he runs his vineyard where he allows the poor people to glean there's a, there's a principle called gleaning and what gleaning is is when they had their vineyards and crops and that they would they wouldn't take everything they'd leave the fruit and and grain around the outside of the vineyard and around the outside of the fields for the poor people and basically that principle of gleaning is what we can do in business as well where where we don't want to maximize our profit at the expense of everyone really business should be a win-win for all parties and that's part that's part of what we teach at kingdom initiatives is to make sure that we're not uh so hard on the opposition and and other people and screwing people down that we're playing fair, we're doing it God's way, where we're looking after everyone. You know, the core principles of the Bible is love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, one of my core scriptures is Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things shall be added unto you. And as we seek God to do what is right and uh, implement the principles that he teaches in his word then we will see uh people flourish you know one of the root causes of of um sin and corruption around the world is greed and self-centeredness and people trying to maximize profit for themselves at the expense of other people and basically the teachings of kingdom initiatives and the teachings of jesus in the bible are about trying to avoid that when jesus came he came to address a corrupt, the church or the uh, the leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees and religious leaders of the of 
of Judaism, of the law, the law of Moses, were corrupt. And he came to address that. And uh, that's what he wants. That's what he wants us to do in, in kingdom initiatives. Dave Hodgson, who runs the thing, his his mission, his assignment in life, because we believe we all have an assignment, a God-given assignment. His assignment is to see Australia as the first nation to to eradicate poverty, and um, through business, if we can, if we can reach eight percent of all small to medium business owners and get them to be doing business God's way where we're looking out for a fellow worker and we're not trying to screw each other down then that will reach a tipping point where more and more businesses will come on board and they'll all do business God's way to to a point where it'll make Australia the first sheep nation in the world so I'm Personally, I'm not in Australia, I'm in New Zealand, but we can see the same thing happen in New Zealand as well and right around the world. So anyway, that's that's one of the things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about living for Jesus Christ. I'm passionate about spreading the kingdom of God because I believe we are in the last days. Um, the times are getting evil and there's a lot of corruption around the world. And as we step up as the sons and daughters of God that we're called to be, like uh, Romans chapter 8 talks about, and we step into that in our, not only in our knowledge, but in our relationship with God. Um, we can step into our God-given callings. We can step into our assignments, what God has for us. And we can start to take dominion, which is the original mandate. You know, when God first came down to Adam and Eve in the garden, he said, take dominion over all of this creation. He got Adam to name all the animals. And um, that's what we're called to do, step back up into that rightful place of dominion but it's not dominating people uh it's doing doing it god's way and showing it through love so love wins love if you uh, read read the new testament and read paul and uh see uh first corinthians chapter 13 the love chapter he says you know i can speak in tongues i can i can drive out demons i can do all of these things but without love, I am nothing. I'm just a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. So love is the key. And this is what Christ showed Jesus Christ when he came and gave his life for us. And as we, as we go out and take this love to the world, and, uh, you know, obviously I said it before, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. That is the core of the Bible, core of Jesus' teaching. And as we do, as we show the love of God to everyone, we'll be able to eradicate poverty We'll be able to eradicate all of the evil around the world and combat the enemy and step up into our rightful place to take dominion and to see our neighbor and everyone flourish and uh that's that's part of my calling so hey look uh, i won't i won't ramble on anymore but i'm really excited about that passionate about business passionate about uh, the construction business and building where i have experience and passionate about helping to teach um, kingdom-minded people to become closer to Christ uh, and to step into their God-given assignment to take dominion and to see this world a better place. So God bless, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the future. Thanks.